This is the Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Hi everybody, my name is Georgina Hagen. Um, I am a Starlight Express alumni and my journey with Starlight Express started in 2010 when I flew over to Bochum in Germany and I started state school for the amazing show that is Starlight Express. Well, you know, I, I I did Starlight. The first time I did Starlight Express was 1988. <laughs> I don't want to make you feel old, but I wasn't born then. <laughs> I know. No, it's, hey, I totally get it, and I love it because uh, um, I, I tell and I spoke to a lot of the alumni that those of us that were there back then, like in a New, in a New York show, sure. White Top and all of us, and we all say that you know. Uh, we were the, like the guinea pigs. We paved the way. And so now you guys have taken it to a whole new level, not only with the skill sets that you guys bring to the table, but the vocals and the ability to performance. So you guys are phenomenal. I'm just so excited about how this has become just an incredible show. Now, uh, how did you first find out about Starlight Express? Okay, so I grew up with Starlight Express. So my dad um, was uh, the MD of the show in London and had played in the band throughout its entire 18 year run. So from the very beginning, he was involved. So when I was born, I was a Starlight baby. (laughs) Brilliant. I love it. (laughs) I grew up um, going into the Apollo Victoria in London almost every week with my dad and uh you know being around the cast i used to sit up on the lighting desk um and eat sweets with the lighting operator uh damien and uh used to get everybody to wave at me as they'd go past in the races that's kind of my it was my my memories of starlight from being a kid and being backstage and you know, at first being very scared of everybody and all of the amazing makeup and costumes and mm-hmm. everyone being so tall on skates in comparison to to me, who was Diddy. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, I yeah, I grew up, I grew up around the show. Wow. So, <laughs> so it's, it's like, it, like my own kids, my own kids, they, they see everything that my wife and I, we do, we still do commercials and we actually have a commercial that we're doing, we're shooting a commercial on, on Monday. And we got to, and my whole family, we all do it. And, and my kids and my wife, and, and we, we just did a commercial. I can't say what the commercial is yet because it's, it still hasn't aired but sure. we did a commercial last month. And it's just the whole family. So we've done a lot of products. So our kids grow That's up with amazing. It. It, it is. And it's, I guess it's in the blood. And I think of Arlene with Alana and, you know, <laughs> yeah, totally. and, uh, Debbie. and Debbie with Lauren. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember I Lauren. Do the show with Lauren. You did. I did. That is that is incredible. I love it. I love it. So you grew up with it. Your dad was, you know, in in orchestra, the MD, and all that. Yep. You experienced. You saw it. You it's in your blood. Yep. So at what point did you know you wanted to actually do it seriously? And then how did the audition? What how did all that work out? Okay, so I always wanted to be graceful. Knew that that wasn't ever going to happen. So when I was about five or six, I kind of realised that uh, my dreams of being Greaseball and Starlight Express were never really going to come true. So I always wanted to be the little girl. I always used to call Dinah the little girl. Always wanted to be Dinah. And, uh, And then obviously as I grew older and I understood the show more then of course I wanted to be Pearl. Pearl was like the dream role for me. Um, and so in 2000 and so Starlight closed in London, I was devastated and my dad continued then to, uh, you know, take out, for example, the UK tour production and he came over to Broadway. I mean, he was Broadway before that, but then Japan, Australia, Germany he's been everywhere with the show and in 2000 I think it was 2004 forgive me if I'm wrong um when they took out the UK tour which was the same sort of version that was over in Vegas at the time yes and I got a phone call saying um you know or my dad got a phone call saying would Georgina be interested in coming and reading for the voice of control 
And at this point, I was 13. And I was, I said, yeah, absolutely. Gosh, Tara Wilkinson, who was the voice of control in town, is iconic and was iconic for me growing up listening to that voice was it for me that is one of the biggest parts of starlight express is is her her take on voice of control so i went and i read a little bit of script for it and they said yep yeah, great I want you to be the voice of control for the uk tour the starlight express i think it's the third dimension so that was the first time i kind of ever dipped my toes into starlight wow. Um, so I recorded, you know, the voice of control and it was a, a new version of the show to what I, to anything I'd ever experienced before, um, which was amazing. And then my voice was used on several productions of the tour that went out, even over in, um, Australia and New Zealand, it was the, still the same recording. And then in 2009, I was... I just turned 18 and I said, right, I'm old enough now to audition for it in Germany. Um, so I did. And that was, that was that. I got a phone call saying, yes, they've offered you um, first cast diner, cover pearl. And you start in February. Wow. Wow. That is, that's amazing. You're the first one that I met that actually did the voice of it because the voice was also my, uh, so fascinating for me. And, you know, and so that's, that's brilliant. I love it. Now, I, I, out of curiosity, can you share your dad's name? Yes. Peter Hagen. Peter Hagen. I actually like, I can give him creds. <laughs> Mixture of mine and your name. Yes. I love it. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Now you, uh, what was what was your audition process like? So the same as everybody else's, I went to it was a place it was in a place called um, Danceworks in London. Yes. And I went in and I it was over the space of about a week or three or four days. So I went in the first day and I sang my own song, and then they gave me the, the audition panel, um, gave me. Um, some material to take away. So I kind of was given a lot of uh, the carriage material. So Pearl Diner, Buffy Ashley. And I got asked to come back the next day and I did a dance round. Mm -hmm. um, and then had to stay behind and then did um, some of the material around the piano. At that point, it was a lot of harmony work for Girls Rolling Stock. Um, and then went in for my final and sang through, you know, all of the material, kind of from like Ashley Buffy upwards to Pearl. And then, yeah, then went away and waited for a few weeks and then got, got the yes. Well, now who did you audition for? Who was at the audition for you? So for me, I had Debbie O'Brien, the casting director for the show. Um, I had Phil Edwards, mm -hmm. who was musical supervisor. Yeah. I had Stephen Rosso. Oh, Steve. I had Debbie. Debbie, yes. And my dad was the pianist, of all people. <laughs> the audition pianist. Mm -hmm. And I think I auditioned for John Neopfar, I think was the MD. And then when I actually joined, I never officially got to work with John. It, it um, kind of all changed over as I got there, but auditioned for they, they were my audition panel wow that was great and so you you were hired it must have been fun when you went into your dad you went and hugged your dad hi daddy <laughs> weird it was so weird i just remember going this is the most surreal experience because i know all of these people yeah that, yeah wow and auditioning for a, a panel of people that you know is far worse than auditioning for a panel of people that you don't know that's funny. I, I could imagine. I could imagine. And it's like you know, you're at a party. Everyone knows you're, you know, you perform, you sing, and they say, oh, sing, sing for us. But right now you, you're actually singing trying to get a gig. Yeah. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> so you get hired and you got your date when you're supposed to show up. Yep. And now the first day of rehearsals, what was that like? I mean, actually rehearsing uh, for a show that you grew up with. I, okay. So... A lot of people that I, uh, we had kind of arrived at the airport in Dusseldorf and we got on the 
the bus or the coach to the theatre to our hotel to, to drop off our luggage. It was freezing cold, like snow on the ground cold. And that night we were going to go and watch the show. Now, a lot of people that I that were in the same cast as me had, some of them had never heard of the show, some of them had never seen it, some had more of an idea, some had seen it in London. We were a big, quite a big group of us. Um, and I sat down that night in that spectacular auditorium thinking this is going to be amazing. So just concentrate on, on what it is, you know, that you have to do. And I watched it and the realization very soon like sort of set in as to, Oh my goodness, I have to do this. I have to do this. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> Seeing people coming down like the bowl and the profile going, what have I done? What have I signed up for? And then the first day of rehearsals, we got told to, you know, put our skates on kind of in the middle of the room and then just to head across to the ballet bar. And not one of us could stand up. Wow. Think, oh, there is no way I am ever going to be able or ever going to be at the standard of the, the, the people that are in the cast at the moment. Fear was what I remember feeling was just complete fear. <laughs> what was what was the uh the, the your greatest challenge for you obviously you're a singer and, perform, and you dance i'm sure because you grew up in the theater and then so i know the skating is it, it was a set it's huge the reality realization so for you what was the first real first hurdle for you the skating the skating for sure for sure i was not didn't take to it like a duck to water put it that way i was not one of the strongest in the group when it comes to skating. Mm. <laughs> I struggled. I remember Michael Fraley whipping my butt mm. to get me to where I needed to be in order to be in the show. Wow. Wow. So, so I know we all know about the, you know, the ripped up feet, the, you know, bandages and how the, you know, the brutal, how brutal the skates are and the toe stop work yeah. and all that. And, can you share some of that? Uh, in, totally. I, I, oh, I had I had holes in my feet, yeah. especially when we started choreography. That that was the the hardest thing, and I didn't even you know as a as a carriage, I never had to do some of the harder toe stop works. For example, in like ACDC, and yeah. um, but my toes were shredded and the back of your heel like your achilles your heel where you're trying mm -hmm. to break the boot in enough to be able to get up on your toe stops mm -hmm. and it just rubs and rubs and rubs and i remember in i'd gone sort of backstage to current cast during rehearsals we're all under the same roof rehearsing as the show's going on and speaking to some of the girls in the current cast and they said oh we all we all wrap up you know we wrap up our toes I thought that's a brilliant idea. Worst idea, really, in hindsight, because I should have done it to harden the skin. It sounds so gross. I'm so yeah. sorry. Harden yeah. the skin on my feet. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to wrap my toes. Didn't feel any pain. But then, of course, for the first four years of my Starlight career, I had to wrap my toes every single day, every single show. Because mm. I never allowed my feet to bleed. Yeah. To toughen up your condition for that, yeah. Yeah, so that, I, I remember, I, I gosh, it, to the, yeah, I remember how my feet would get just brutal. And, yeah, the, I guess the, the components, my wife did components as well. Uh, she was a wrench on the U.S. tour, but she also understudied Ashley and Buffy, and so she did that a couple of times. But the toe work, her and the components, we could dig those toes in. And, of course, we you know, we had uh, uh, Ilsa, Ilsa back in the day and Void, back in the day where Boyd, Boyd was brutal and she was incredible she was the girls we would all watch her and she would make it look like it was nothing and the way she would strike her and and of course everyone you know uh, were just it was it was just tough so i can only imagine what uh everyone we know what everyone goes through i think that's what bonds us all together as starlight alumni is that process sure. universal now uh you've done you've done other projects you've done other shows and I've asked this of other uh, alumni. Um, my, your thoughts on comparing this show? Yes, let's go ahead and compare this show with other shows. I've done not only Starlight, I've done stunt work and movies and on stage, and I've 
uh, I've, you know, I'm a full-time martial artist. That's what I do. I've been doing martial arts for 49 years, and I teach for uh -huh. doing it for 30 years. And and I did Sesame Street. I did her. I did a lot of dance shows, and I started off in classical ballet. But Starlight Express was the most challenging show ever yeah. in my whole career. And so, w would you make a? Would you think that was a fair statement? <laughs> Absolutely, it's challenging in so many ways. I think that's. It's not not only is it physically challenging, it's men, it's mentally challenging. Mm -hmm. When you're when you're so when you're so many weeks into into rehearsals and you're kind of doing choreography in the evenings and you're doing skate school during the day and it's just relentless. Your feet hurt, your body hurts, you know, you're just you it's so it and it's you're so exhausted that that it's draining it's it's to the point of i i remember i mean i remember saying so many times in skate school i i don't think i can do this i really don't i was so tired it's mentally challenging physically challenging i have muscles hurt on starlight that i didn't even know i had yeah and but that all gets you know that first that first night when you open God, I remember coming. I, I sobbed. I did the last starlight and uh, just everything sort of relief, I think, mm -hmm. of, of the first one being done. And that that most amazing sense of achievement of I have officially done Starlight Express. Even if it's like just a sh I've, I've completed a show in front of an audience. I didn't fall over. I've done it. Wow. Now, what do you re have moments, uh, memories of the show itself during, or is it like many of us are I blank? <laughs> we have a blank. We we understand. We, I think many of us say the same thing at the end when Star Light. When we do that at the end, we, it's like, oh my gosh, I did it. I survived this. I did it. I actually did it because I think we all go through. The, I don't know if I could because I broke my hand in rehearsals in Hamburg, and so when we got on the set, uh, everyone had been on the set about three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, I wasn't sure whether I was able to do it, but uh, um, and I remember going down. Someone took a picture. One uh, took a picture of me going down the profile, holding on to my wife Renee, and and I'm like like this behind it. The picture's right up in our studio, and me holding on, dragging my toes <laughs> up. <laughs> and and she's just trying to pull me along, and I'm like this, scared to death, but. Uh, but you're but do you have any memories of the show itself and moments of the show yeah, yeah of course of course i do my first of all i have never felt nerves like it mm -hmm. the de that that whole day oh i felt sick i felt yes. so sick i just there are so many elements that could go wrong first of all german's not my first language I could say something, you know, that means something completely different. I could mispronounce something that means something else and get into serious trouble. If I forget my words, it's not my first language. I can't blag in German. Mm. I, you know, at that point, even even still on opening night, you're still building your stamina enough to be able to sing and skate and dance and all of those things at the same time i and that feeling of you know that that stamina push where you kind of your legs start to go a bit jelly and you feel a bit oh gosh i need to i need to sit down but i can't i've still got you know pumping iron and crazy to go and i remember just it was when i it was in the, it was in that too and i was about to start singing uncoupled or a coupled and i just remember thinking you need to take a breath, like a big breath, and calm yourself down. Because it was the first time sort of as Dinah that you really do anything on your own, and you are on your own. I mean, Buffy and Ashley are there with you, but they get to skate off to the side, and it's, mm -hmm. you, it, you're you on your own. Yeah. And I remember going, oh, my God, if I fall over in this number, I haven't got anybody to cover me or hide me. I'm in the middle of the stage. On my own totally exposed absolutely exposed wow yeah and then also i think also with the um the first show the, the adrenaline oh. because 
that's because that's the first because you've done the run throughs you've done everything you've done you've prepared but there's no preparation for what you're psychologically and physiologically and emotionally going to go through because of the opening adrenaline totally. that, how do you control that because you don't know until you're there until you start it I don't think I did control it I don't think I ever really had a had a, had a minute to think about it until the end and I kind of went oh and and then I was on, on an adrenaline high for a couple of hours after the show and then obviously you stop and everything kind of the tiredness and the you know it all kicks in and you realize how how long you've been on that high for yeah. you know doing the show during rehearsals trying to get everything done and ready in time yeah 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 how I, I, I was just thinking as you were saying that also I was thinking of the races as well how did how did you go with the races how, did, how was that experience with uh, with you well I was very fortunate to have two I mean, Starlight veterans as my my grease ball and Electra. I had Ernest Marche in as my grease ball, and I had Andreas Wolfram as my. Oh Electra. God, yes. Both of which mm -hmm. are, you know, not only incredible human beings but mm -hmm. incredible skaters. They've been there for years. They really knew what they were doing. And I remember that first race day when you are in rehearsals, and the, it's the first time you do it with your sort of first cast partner who you're going to who you're going to be with mm -hmm. and I, I I was so God, I was so nervous and it's like come on it's fine yep we'll, we'll do race one and I remember thinking I I cannot skate behind you you go upside down on your skates you flip on your skates there's no way and and I was not as I say I was not very good on my skates when I first started and he let it be known that I wasn't the best and that I used to be, you know, a bit heavy on the belt in rehearsals. So I did extra work with him. I had to push push him around the track and Michael Fraley made sure that I, you know, I did this thing called slide board, which is a... Yes, we, yeah, he got that from, uh, I think, Randy Whitescarver. We used to do that on the on the US tour. Yeah, building those muscles up. And that's, oh, yeah. And, oh, it used to hurt like hell. Um to the but to the point I, and I remember I was so I was so transfixed on I I so desperately wanted to be a good racing partner I didn't want to ever be felt on the belt at all I every single show for a year I'm sure I drove him up the wall I used to come off stage after race one to Ernest and I'd go was that all right did you could did you feel me was that okay did you feel me at any point and he'd go no no I didn't stop asking <laughs> So wow. yeah, I was but I was so lucky because I learned a lot from both of them, from him and Andreas. Having those two as my, you know, my race partners for my first year was it definitely, definitely helped me moving up, moving upwards to then obviously bumping up to first class pearl. Definitely would not be the skater that I am now if it wasn't for getting to race with, with both of them. Mm. Wow, that's brilliant! I love it. I know both of them. I've I I worked a couple of years with um Andrea, so he and I yeah we've done Rockies together back in the day. No way! It's so <laughs> he was my lecture my first year, and then when I moved up to Pearl, he moved to Greaseball. Oh wow! Yeah, we were together then for three years as Pearl and Greaseball. Very cool. Very cool. Now, how how many years did you do it for? Well, I did I did four years. So I did from two thousand and ten mm -hmm. to two thousand and and 14 because i i was i did the 25th anniversary as pearl sweet nice amazing wow what, then, was that, what was that like the 20 uh, i couldn't make it because uh, i'm running a business so i couldn't make it it was the only other time aside from my aside from my initial opening night it was the first time ever i mean having the audience full of ex starlight cast members the atmosphere was absolutely electric absolutely buzzing i remember standing up the top with marcel who was um my rusty and then abigail diva who was diner carla pullen who was buffy and emma jenkinson as ashley and all four of us 
girls were just like, what are we doing? This feels so like out of body. It's so bizarre. And just doing that skate around and hearing that wall of cheers. No, there was just, there wasn't one person in that audience that, well, first of all, there wasn't a single person in that audience who didn't love the show. Everyone loved the show. Everyone wants you to succeed and do a phenomenal show just because it's that starlight family. You never want anybody to fail. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want everybody to do so well. It was just, I can't, I can't even put into words how, I mean, that was an, a real adrenaline wow. kick. And the nerves, I mean, the nerves were unreal. I remember think, standing up there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm... I'm about to do a show for 25 other pearls. Wow. What if they all think I'm rubbish? You just, it just, it was so, it was so, it was bizarre. Wow. Yeah, I know. It was, it was, I saw the footage. I remember Renee and I <clears throat> on this side of the world just following it. And I remember I, I took my skates and I went to a skate park. And I videotaped myself skating on the bowls there. And, yeah. and I, I did a shout out to Michael Rand because he did, a, I think he did Electra. He did. He did a lecture and I did a shout out to him and we were communicating and just he was sharing the experience and that was brilliant. Now, obviously, you got a lot of memories and here's a bit of a challenging question. I, I think what's your uh, I mean, this is this is life for us. And I'll be it for me. I mean, all and you as well. We've, we have so many experiences in our life. We've done so many uh, shows and. Yeah. But Starlight's definitely something is unique. What are life lessons that you would share? You could share with others in the world, other alumni and uh, fans, because the fans are loving this, and the alumni are loving this as well. They're especially loving, you know, the backstory and the beginnings, mm -hmm. and also life lessons. So, what life lessons would could you draw from your experience with Starlight? Oh gosh. Um... You really can, seriously, you really can do anything you put your mind to. I remember being, well, I've said it already. I remember being in skate school saying, I really, I can't do this. I really can't, I can't, I can't skate. And then, you know, I did it for four years and then just came back recently and did another year. I can skate now. Um, couldn't see it then. Couldn't look forward, just fast forward and say, you know, you, you can, you're, you're going to be able to do it. You can do it. Definitely that you can, you can put your mind to doing anything that you want to and just don't give up. Don't ever give up. Never stop trying. Never stop reaching for that next hurdle, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I know uh, it's a major experience on that. So, so I want to have you share what's your passion the, uh, these days. What are you doing these days? Share with everyone. Uh, because, you know, life for me after Starlight continued, and it's great. It's awesome. I had the experience. But life is just incredible. I have a family and my kids, and my daughter is going to be 19. My son's going to be 16, and I'm running a business. I have several businesses that I'm running. My wife is just amazing, doing amazing things. And and our anniversary is the same as Starlight's anniversary. No way! So we, we got married. My wife and I were talking about this the other day. We got married like a few months in, 80, in 87, 88, earlier, right before we did Starlight and opened on Starlight. So every time Starlight has an anniversary, that's our anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, but we have, but we're enjoying life. So what are you doing oh. now that, you know, after Starlight, what are some things you're into you want to share with everyone else? Oh gosh. Well, I'm, I'm still auditioning for things. I'm still, you know, I'm still working hard to get the next, next, next job, next role. Um, aside from that, I, um, I just just do what I enjoy. Do a bit of gardening. I like gardening. Love it. Um, putting you know moving moving back from Germany again. I only moved back in June, so you know getting my house together and you know setting up home back in the UK is actually what I'm doing at the moment. Well, you, you just came, you just got out of Starlight. So I went back and did the thirtieth anniversary. The big wow. show. <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant. I love it. And then came back in June. 
Wow. And so now you're just trying to now get everything situated out of out of starlight and so that's yeah. very cool. But, well, you, you're very you're very young and you have your many, many, many years ahead of yourself. But it's uh, I was so excited to, to get together with you because I knew you were like one of the most recent Starlighter alumni. And I, I couldn't wait to hear your experience and and your I can hear your passion. I can see your passion. And I love it. And I can see that you love the show. You have an incredible appreciation for the show and also I love the show. There's nothing that it fulfilled every single one of my childhood dreams and memories and more. Except for Greaseball. Except for Greaseball. Still yeah. never got to play Greaseball. I've spent, you know, five years on and off in that building. And I've never <laughs> once never once put the Greaseball costume on. I was just about to ask you, did you I never did it? I don't know why I never did it, but I never did it. That's right, because we had cast members in the past that wanted to do, you know, particular characters and some of them actually put the costume on. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of doing that. I remember one. I think it was. Uh, I think it was Kelly. I, for, I forget her last name. Kelly. She wanted to be a Rocky, and so one show, and we didn't know it. And I think I was on as Rocky too. And at the at the bows where we did the bows, she came out as Rocky three. <laughs> Full no way. There were two Rocky threes. There were two Rocky threes in the bows, and I think, I think it was her last show. She was leaving, and so they let her do it, and she just came out, and it was it was brilliant. It was brilliant. fun. It was funny, and so that's great. Well, Georgina, thank you so much for spending the time yeah. with me and sharing. And I would like to give you guys the last word. What's the last word you want to share with the fans out there and the other alumni? Firstly, well, firstly, the fans are for me. You know they're a massive part of Starlight. Their their love and support over the years has been so astounding and incredibly humbling. And I'm so grateful to each and every one of them for coming back time and time again to see it. And all for, I mean all of the incredible gifts that I've received over the years. It's just you guys are the heart and soul of Starlight Express as as far as I'm concerned. And as for the other alumni, we did it, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We made it. We made it. And we're, I remember Reba said that when she went to Starlight, she says, she says, I did it. I did it. Just like you. We all did it. And we yeah. here we are talking about it. So thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing your Starlight Express adventure. And um, for some reason, uh, it may not be over for you. <laughs> Who knows? Never say never. Never know. You just never know. You still have a lot. You still have a lot of starlight left in you. I'm sure. If you wanted to get bring it out, you can. Oh, and, I'm sure. Uh, I know. <laughs> my, my my starlight time is done, but yours, you still have. If you want to, you still have. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. You have an incredible day, and uh, I'll I'll share. All this with you. I'll let you know when yours comes out. And I'm just, you know, I had a discussion with my wife. I go, okay, should I just let everyone know when theirs come out, the dates? She says, no, have it be reveals. Keep it a reveal. Yeah. And so it's every Sunday. So uh, right now yeah. I have an uh, amazing, amazing thing going. I'm, I love it. And I'm honestly, I'm so honored that you, that you got in touch and, and wanted to speak to me because I saw, um, I saw Reavers, I think, before you contacted me, and I thought, whoever's done this is brilliant. Oh, thank it's you so brilliant. much. Well, you know, you, you guys bring the heart, and I knew the first time uh, I spoke, I did Stephen Skeels first. And I've done, I've done as of this right now, and uh, I'll, I'll speak to the audience as well. As of right now, uh, of this taping with you, uh, Georgina, you're like the, you're the 29th interview. I've done. No way. 29. So That's the amazing. heart that you guys bring, bring uh, there's been for, for these interviews for me, there's been tears, there's been a lot of laughter, a lot of, and so appreciation and heart. And that's what's coming from everyone. And uh, from those of us that did it, that started our journey over 30 years ago, and some of us that started our journey maybe five years ago, some of our, those that I've, I've spoken to that started their journey maybe last year. The heart is there, the appreciation for Starlight and the legacy of Starlight and the history that's uh, that's their part. Starlight is just, for me, 
it's become, and I, and I took it all for granted. I think many of us did. And I heard that in one of my other interviews that they just, I didn't realize that, uh, that Starlight was going to be this massive. And if I knew, I would have given it more attention <laughs> <laughs> As a, in those moments. And so, uh, but, uh, um, but thank you so much. You have a blessed day and I'll stay in touch. Yes, please do. Please I, I do. Will, I will. And keep me up to date and send me the links. I love the pictures that you sent. So everyone, uh, if you want to find out, just go right below. Right, and, uh, right below is all her pictures, any videos. Uh, watch there. Reach out to her. She's on Facebook. And do you have a do you have a um, a website yet or anything like that? We don't have a website. Okay, so they can connect with Facebook, you. Uh, Instagram, all of the social medias. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So guys, I'll have all the links right below. Get a hold of Georgina. Just let her know and let us know what part of this uh, this interview that you liked the most. And uh, what was your favorite part of it? Other than that, guys, thank you so much for taking your time. Georgina, have a great day. Thank you. You too. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining me on this episode of Starlight Express Alumni Podcast. Next week, I will get together with another alumni. Be sure to subscribe. You can subscribe right here on the website at starlightexpress.club. We are definitely on the iTunes and Stitcher, and we're looking to get on the other platforms, so make sure you check there, subscribe there, and stay connected. If you are a Starlight alumni, please be sure to reach out to me if you would like to be on the podcast. Would love to hear your stories and share your story with the Starlight Express fans and other alumni. Look forward to sharing with you next week. Everyone have a great day.